upside down. Very weighted. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to um, open the July 20th, 2022 select board meeting. Do you have any amendments to the agenda tonight? Hearing none. Uh, we'll move on to the approval of the minutes of July 6, 2022. I'd like to make a, an amendment to the, to the, the correction for the minutes. Um, it was stated that mowing was going to be done end of July, August, and the cost of which was uh, quoted at $7,000. The correct number is nine and a half. I also have a change um, under the paving grant. Um, the last, the end of the last sentence there it says, and seek a grant next year. Actually, we're going to use the grant that we received next year. Um, it's good and we can use it until 2024. So we're just using our town appropriation for the shimming on the North Holker Road this year. Next year we will uh, do. We will take advantage of the one hundred eighty-five thousand eight hundred four dollar grant because then we will have uh, more matching funds, hopefully, from our budget. Anything else? If not. Um, I'll make a motion to approve as amended. We have a second. Second that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Comments from the community. Jim, you're here, I know. Yes, yeah, I'm requesting that the letters. From the select board for approval for our point drop this year, September 3rd and 4th. And also, um, I'm applying for a grant from Vermont Leaves to Cities and Towns for uh, $2,700. And uh, it needs approval from the select board. So they are looking to buy more reflective vests. Some rescue gloves, and what is this other stock slow? Uh, sign paddle. Uh huh. And an LED one. Uh -huh. uh, and it's covered 100% from the Vermont Police Cities and Town. So there's no match. Does this include the, well, I guess the question is where is the dry hydrant situation? Which one? Uh, Houndale, I think it is. So um, we didn't have enough funding because the prices went up so high. Right, right. When the availability of the pipe. So we're putting it on hold till next year. Okay. Hopefully things improve. Because uh, the parts were 18,000. And just to keep that in, in limbo would have been too much for us. Gotcha. Yeah. So do we have a motion to approve a fire department point drop on September 3rd and 4th, 15? I'll make that motion. Wait a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. Jim gave me a copy and I'll just type that up for him. He does it too long. And also to sign off on the, the grant. Yeah, that's the next one. Okay, sorry. So what was the amount again, Jim? Uh, roughly 2,700. Uh, I could add it up again. Well, do we approve uh, allowing the select board to apply for this grant through our insurance company? These are safety. Um, 
things. It's a grant for um, safety equipment. Yes, I know that. So I'll, I'll make a motion to approve select board apply for the grant. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Are you going to go now and take this? No, I'll just hang out. Okay. Thank you. I'll sign it. Can I have a minute? Correspondence from the community. There's quite a bit here. Um, one thing I wanted to tell you was that uh, we talked last week about applying for a recreation grant to rebuild the parking area at the North Wolken ball field because we received that $2,000 uh, water resiliency grant to protect the um, highway. Uh, in talking with the Lamar County Planning Commission, uh, they think we should wait till next year because of two things. I went on and looked and we have to have all our assessments in, in place before we apply. We need to do an archeological assessment. And also the engineer would design, kind of design the plan. So we'll know better for that next year. They said that we should just hold off on that. Just a request from the Red Cross um, to find out about an appropriation. We've given it to them before, but they didn't ask us this year. We received $477 um, in um, a refund for our audit for workers' comp. We were under what we had estimated our payroll would be. We just have notification from the Vermont Housing, Vermont Homeowners Assistant Program that one of our um, delinquent taxpayers is going through the process of looking for funding to pay for their property taxes. I'm sure you'll bring this up in your report, we have an invoice from All Metals on taking down our tax sale property building. Just something on the state of Vermont for our for, uh, how much our highway, quarterly highway funds are. Uh, it looks like uh, we have notice from the Cannabis Control Board that we will need to be calling a meeting for um, Wilkitts, what is, what, are, what is it called now, uh, Wilkitts? Oh, the name of their firm? No, uh, the Cannabis board. Committee? The Wilkitts oh, Cannabis Control Committee. Yeah. Control Committee. Wilkitts Local Control Commission needs to meet to approve this application that's gone through their board. State has approved. State has approved, but it's no good until we meet and approve it. And I guess that's all I want. Any questions on that? Okay. Any other public comments? If not, we'll move on to the public hearing on the amendments to the street naming and street numbering ordinance. So I made a few changes. Um, Deb did, was the only one that responded to me with some concerns. Um, Nothing major that changes um, the ordinance itself, moving things around. Um, her suggestions were to uh, not say E911, but to say 911 instead. Um, was one of the other ones. We moved um, the request from the Wilkett Development Review Board down into future development, not under the street naming. Um, I reworded it a little bit 
more so hopefully people could understand it a little better. There seemed to be some confusion with the wording that was presented us to us. It's on the first page on the last paragraph. I did, it was basically just uh, moving things around and making them a little clearer. Comments? Comments? It's taken us months. <laughs> And then you have a bit refined. We've gone over it and over it and over it. So it's now in uh, after if we approve it goes into the 60 day of stage. Is that correct? So tonight is our public hearing. Uh, we're not required to hold one, but we are. Um, when we adopt it, then 14 days it needs to go into the paper and be posted five places. Um, and the ordinance uh, is effective 60 days from today, but the voters can ask for a, a vote on this uh, within 44 days. So in the paper would be for the whole ordinance? No, I'm going to do up a summary. It's too expensive to put these two pages in. For the public, uh, do you want me to explain it at all? No. Yes. <laughs> short, yeah, short summary of this. Basically, uh, the Development Review Board uh, found that our street naming ordinance did not jive with the zoning regulations that they had, and we uh, went and undid something they did. So they came to us and asked if we would amend this ordinance because they felt it was easier than amending the zoning. Um, basically, they want to have the ability, a may, um, to allow them to create a private road if there's just one or two structures on it. The E911 rules say three, but if there's one or two structures on it and there's a possibility for future development, they want to make it a private road. And what it will do ultimately is allow some properties to be subdivided where they wouldn't be allowed because there would be no road frontage. Now there's a private road and there's road frontage. In the meantime, because we had to redo it, we decided that we would really look at this ordinance. It was really out of date. And as a board, we have decided that we are going to use some of our ARPA funds to put up E911 signs in town, like you see in Hyde Park and Elmore. So we need to, we needed to write that in. That's the basics of it. Any further discussion? Are you saying that the town doesn't maintain private roads, does it? We do not. I heard you say something about when you do something, then it becomes some, something within the town. If someone comes in and wants a sub, to create a subdivision, yeah. Um, gives the development review board, who's the group that approves the subdivision, the authority to maybe create a private row if someone's coming in and you know creating some lots. We are not going to plow it or maintain it. All we're going to do is name it. Okay, no, other, other places usually the developer or whoever is putting all the money into it has the <clears throat> wherewithal to uh, name the road. 
Well, the developer can come, come to the select board. The select board has ultimate authority over the name. I mean, they can present a name to us. Thank you. Are we ready to vote on this? Sure. We have a motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the final version of the ordinance. I second that motion. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? So carried. I will pass this around for your signature and we will make sure that we follow the procedure for adopting the ordinance. Thank you. Okay, is Kate with us yet? Hi, hey, hi everybody. Hi. I think Gordon um, is also connecting in, um, but I sent him the agenda, which said we were starting at six thirty. So maybe he might be a little here. Oh, he's here. Great. Um, so I wanted to give you an update on um, the proposed Wilkett Community Forest, and also connect with you um, about the Born property. Um, so I heard uh, this past weekend that. Um, the Bourne family is interested in selling their property to the town at appraised value. Um, so I don't have the appraisal in hand yet. Uh, they, the appraiser had to make a couple small changes um, with the, uh, some extra details that the family provided, but it looks like um, the uh, Bedell property uh, was appraised at 537000 and the Bourne property is going to um, come in around 520000 um, and I know in the past, um, in my discussions um, with the select board, I, I kind of said I was ambivalent about whether um, the Bourne property was included or not in the community forest. And I, I wanna make the case tonight um, that it should be included for a number of reasons. Um, and I just wanted to come to the select board to discuss that and confirm that you do wanna move forward um, with uh, both the Bedell property and um, the Bourne property. Um, so the um, in my discussions over the last couple of months with Department of Environmental Conservation about the Whisper program, which was wh how we had hoped to fund the entire acquisition, they are a bit concerned about um, the recreation um, and trails on that are proposed for the Bedell property. They really want their whisper funds to go to um, an acquisition where water quality is kind of the top purpose. Um, and because of kind of how trail networks are laid out, they um, and the way that these two properties are laid out, they would need some stream crossings um, and potentially some of the existing um, forest roads do come within. Um, kind of 50 feet of some of the wetland areas. So they were a little concerned about putting their money into uh, the acquisition of the Bedell property, but they actually proposed, you know, maybe we could instead put our money into the Bourne parcel where the trail network um, kind of isn't a, going to be a big focus. Um, and so I wanted to explore that with them. And um, we, this past Monday, put in an application to Vermont Housing Conservation Board for the full cost of the Bedell property. Um, so that would mean VHGB would fund it um, with, with 537,000 for the acquisition of Bedell property. And then we would either use Whisper funding or Federal Community Forest Program funding for the purchase of the Bourne property um, to match the VHGB money. So. VHGB typically does not um, put in the full amount of capital into a, a town forest project. They, um, they like to see 
you know, match with either town, private, and or a mix of town, private, and federal funds. Um, and in 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 the past, you know, uh, this would be considered a local municipal project, which had a limit of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. But um, because VHCB has um, significantly more funds this year than normal, and because of both the um, recreation benefits, the Moilo Rail Trail and its location next to a school, VHGB um, agrees that they will consider this product to be of statewide importance, which gets us over the normal $150,000 limit. Um, all to say that it would be tough to convince VHGB to fully fund the Bedell parcel without the Bourne parcel as match. Um, if we, if, if the select board was not interested in acquiring the Bourne parcel, we would have to find some other um, private or other funds um, to match their funding for the Bedell parcel. So by kind of expanding the whole project to the full um, two parcels, we can use either whisper funds or federal community forest program funds for Bourne to match the HGB that um, would go into Bedell. We, we have um, 16 months to um, figure out the funding for Born. Um, that's our option um, agreement term. Um, so that gives us the opportunity to go for federal funds, um, which the application is due in, in February if we aren't um, able to make whisper funds work. Um, secondly, I think, you know, in addition to making the finances work, um, the, the Born you know, having a, a bigger town forest of 700 acres allows you a lot more flexibility for multiple uses. Um, there's been some interest in the stewardship committee of talking about, you know, potential quiet recreation without trails, you know, a, a place that can be dedicated um, more for kind of hunting, fishing and, and non-trail um, quiet recreation, as well as the potential of having um, some some old growth stands um, and some non-managed areas of the forest, uh, both for carbon sequestration, um, ecological benefits, as well as kind of the the public benefits of of you know being able to have uh, an old growth forest, which we don't have much of in Vermont right now. So having kind of the both properties can focus the recreation on the Bedell parcel. Um, with you know the Vorek funds that we've gotten for the trail building, and then have the Bourne parcel to be more of the you know dedicated towards hunting, fishing, and and wildlife habitat, water quality, and potential old growth stands. Um, so, and then it also will give direct access to the Moilo Rail Trail, um, which you know we could have one trail going through Bourne that'll connect the Moilo Rail Trail over to the trail network. Um, on the Bedell parcel. Um, would it be helpful for me to bring up a, a map or are you guys pretty familiar with the layout? Sure. Um, I, think, I think you have to enable uh, screen sharing. Right now it's disabled. Go ahead, Katie. Okay. Okay, can you see that? Um, so <clears throat> the Bourne parcel is outlined in yellow. It's 399 acres. Um, it, it has kind of frontage on the rail trail on the north end. It has some of the snowmobile trail over on the west, as well as quite a few headwater streams. And then the proposed um, kind of draft uh, area of where the trails would be are focused over on the Bedell property next to the school and um, kind of on the, the southeast side of where the streams come in. So it could um, kind of have a good connectivity, but also give opportunities for um, multiple types of, of uses that are separated. The other benefit there is um, a lot of the town forests that we've worked on that have 
a lot of trails on them. Um, they have to shut down those trails during hunting season. Um, and it, with this kind of layout, um, you'd be able to kind of direct any folks who want to hunt the property to just use the Bourne property or, or everything kind of on the other side of the stream from the trail network. And you could keep that trail network open during hunting season um, if the, the hunters are kind of focused on the, the other part of the, the property. So um, the addition of the Bourne parcel to the project would not require any additional town funds. We're still proposing just 25,000 of the ARPA funds from the town towards the project. So in a sense, you'd be getting a million dollars worth of property for $25,000. So happy to answer any questions and um, I'd love to see what your, your feeling is. Um, I mean, the, the, this was, did go before the town voters in November as, a, as the full 700 acres, um, which was approved. So just wanted to remind folks of that vote, which was 74% in favor of the full 700 acres. So it sounds like the acquisition of the addition of the Barnes property is actually opens up our finance opportunities. Correct. Um, it was with, with Whisper kind of pulling back from yeah. wanting to uh, fund the Bedell property, um, right. kind of having the Bourne property in the mix helps with either that potential um, of using Whisper towards Bourne or using federal community forest programs towards Bourne, which also, so the federal money, um, which I've secured four different grants over the last six years, um, they fund um, up to 50% of a community forest project. So they would need the match of the Bedell property anyways. Um, so the town would remain the same, is, is that correct? The town what? Well, uh, back at the original proposal, there was a town match for town contribution. Yeah. And that does not change in this scenario. That is correct, yes. So I think between, personally, I think between the uh, opening up the finance opportunities and not having the town uh, contribution change, uh, as you said, is a million dollars worth of land. Um, it was hard, to, it was hard for me to say no to that. Do you want to say anything more interesting as you're the chair of the stewardship committee? I can add a little bit. Um, uh, maybe, maybe not much to add to what Kate said, but um, what I can say is that from the perspective of the, the stewardship committee, um, the, the opinions and ideas that have been brought forth in that committee are all consistent with the idea of having more land. The, there's a number of different options of that. Um, uh, competing interests, if you will, priorities that we've been discussing on the sorts of community ranging from recreation and public access uh, that would be fairly impactful on the environment, relatively speaking, and then also the desire to support old growth forests, support carbon sequestration, um, and simply just to maintain the, the character of the land um, and the Type of access that people who've been living here for a long time have been used to in, in these undeveloped parcels. So, if the town acquires a the, the full acreage, um, it gives us more to work with from the perspective of the forest community. We have more flexibility. There's more things that we can do. It's easier to to consider setting things setting aside some areas for for different types of recreational usage. And set it aside some areas for um, distributed recreation, so to speak. You know, a few hundreds on the property is very different from um, having lots of hiking trails or just uh, quiet mountain biking trails. So um, the Forest Committee would would very much prefer to to work with the whole 700 acre parcel rather than um, simply the parcel. 
I had a question for you. You mentioned about the Fidel property not being open to hunting hunters and fishermen. Um, no, it, it, it definitely could be. You just need to balance the um, kind of the trail network with with the safety um, of the users and, and hunting. So there, it, the town forests I've worked with across the state, um, some town forests choose to close the trail network during kind of deer hunting season um, to allow hunters there, but other, um, other towns have chosen to kind of portion off um, a certain amount of the property to um, the trail network and a certain property to hunters. Um, I mean, there is the limitation that um, you can't have any um, guns within a thousand feet of the school property. So that does limit um, the, the Eastern Bedell property quite a bit. Um, there won't ever be able to be any hunters back there, but I think the whole, the whole property should be definitely be open to fishing. But I think kind of the, the concentration of hunters you could suggest to go to the Bourne property just to limit conflicts with the trail network. Thank you. So Kate will make the decision about that in the, the stewardship committee. And then her, her time too. They'll be working for a year. They'll be deciding what, what they want to see where on that. And then ultimately they'll bring it to the select board for final approval. My only thing is, and I talked I this to you about it, Gordon, is the upper half of the Wickham Bardell property usually is a lot of hunters. So it's not in the lower part. So I think it'd be fine with what trails are already there. It's just making sure they're not using more than a shotgun so there's no lethal trouble. Any other questions for Kate or Warden? Do you want to take a vote on this? Uh, the voters did approve uh, the on November 10th, the purchase of the, the, the whole parcel, oh, 704 acres. You see why you need to, you've already approved it by the voting okay. So we'll be moving forward. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank you for your time. And, and just um, to, to clarify, um, so it looks like it's going to be kind of a closing within two phases. So we will um likely be acquiring or the town will be acquiring the Bedell property first um and the Bourne property will uh be added to the community forest uh within another year so it, it might be two closings but we'll try to make it as seamless as possible thank you very much thanks everybody you're welcome project managers report Great, thank you. Um, as Dolan put it up, I'm going to on all the paper, it's copied and then we can store. Um, so, uh, first on our list is the uh, East Hill project um, has at least completed. Um, I think that uh, All Meadows did a spectacular job. Um, it was completely cleaned out uh, and brought back to a, a point where vegetation can take, take back over and that wetland can be uh, revived. Um, the estimate for the project was uh, $5,500. Uh, because so much metal was taken out in advance of the uh, tear down, uh, the final cost was 28,700. So they did reduce the cost pretty significantly. Uh, certainly appreciate that. Um, as far as we know, the uh, the occupant is no longer in town, and uh, after 20 years, that's that's an accomplishment. Uh, 
Uh, Patch baby on your book, the road is complete. You probably noticed it. Uh, lower portion of North, North Wolf Road by Route 15. Uh, it's a small section that has not been done. Uh, and uh, I think the board may want to look into how we can finance that change. Uh, the town garage here uh, will be installed uh, this Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, so there's going to be it will, it will be propane based, uh, and we received an excellent bid from Borns for propane. Uh, so it's going to save significantly in terms of uh, energy. Um, painting of the town garage is scheduled for Monday. Um, it, it's going to be a multi-week project, um, and uh, we are going to need to uh, rent a man lift for the higher portions. Uh, cost right the best cost we can find right now is three fifty a day. Um, we believe that we would need it for two days uh, to do both the town hall and the upper side of the garage. <clears throat> um, as far as the color choice goes, uh, I think that's we still have time for that. I have some ideas about it only because uh, that is in in. Uh, in relation to the rail trail, as one's coming down the rail trail, their first exposure to the town of Wilco will be that town garage. Um, and I think that it should be welcoming and uh, good color. It definitely will spruce up things. Um, it'll look good. Uh, I think it will help the fire department as well to have that whole area cleaned up. Um, the area behind the building is going to be uh, uh, cleaned up. The tires are, have been taken out, et cetera. Um, what else can we do? Uh, so on Maury Hill, as uh, Linda had mentioned in the correspondence, uh, the town has received a tax relief notification. Um, what that means to the town is that if there is an application um, that is in process, uh, the town has to suspend any tax sale activity. And so uh, uh, Belinda has responded to this and the state now has the third uh, information. Uh, Orange contract, I'm still working on getting a fixed price. Uh, as mentioned before, the fixed price uh, because of the volatility in the market, uh, we are currently paying rank. Um, but we do believe with the reduction in uh, uh, the fuel costs uh, over the past several weeks, uh, it's now time to open up a discussion again for a fixed price from boards uh, before we get into the winter months. Uh, Co-file static IP problem, still working on that with, with their support department. Um, I think Dolan, you and I might need to get together on this one. So, uh, there's some complexity um, with the internet. Um, we have, unfortunately, the plow truck um, has, we have ordered a plow truck almost a year ago uh, to replace uh, one of our older trucks that was mounting in repair costs uh, pretty dramatically. Uh, the truck failed again the other day. Uh, it's in the garage. A repair is upwards to $25,000, dollars $30,000. So our, uh, the pressure is on to get the truck. We have a truck order. Um, this is a supply chain issue. Um, and the original delivery date was April, the current delivery date is November, which is making everybody very nervous, I know. Um, and so we're gonna to continue to put uh, uh, as much uh, pressure as we can on uh, getting the truck delivered. Um, uh, white tail drive update, um, just wanted to mention that uh, we do have uh, individuals that are being housed uh, on Whitetail Drive. 
uh, that are uh, at various degrees of uh, inability, handicap, quadriplegic, et cetera. Um, I have asked the uh, Memorial County Support Services to update the town on who is there, what their special needs are, et cetera. Um, I think it's very important for the fire department. Um, we had two incidents uh, where we had calls, um, one which included a power outage, which was uh, really a, a critical issue. Uh, and uh, so we want to open up the lines of communication. Uh, so the fire department emergency services um, is aware of who's there, what they're considering. And uh, I've updated Jim on this as well. I also want to just final thing is update the sheriff's department report. Uh, every month we receive a report from the sheriff's department. Um, in, uh, in June's report, um, I think probably the uh, key statistic is um, traffic tickets, traffic tickets written. Um, so Woka, uh, there was 15 traffic tickets written in Woka last month and 21 warnings written in Wolka. Um, as opposed to the other town, uh, Hyde Park was 11, Johnson 14, Elmore 7. So um, you know, some of the direct directed patrol uh, that's been requested by citizens um, seems to be having an effect because that has been you know, just in fair numbers. It all depends on exactly what that is. So. So that's it for that. What about the water from Lorne, uh, Benash, to fix, is it the water line, the lucky line? At the garage? No, around this office. Oh, the uh, that's a, actually a power line. Um, so last winter we had a electrical failure in the pump, which is right out here, uh, the well pump. And because it was winter, um, they had to do a patch job in which there's an electrical wire that goes all the way around the building. Uh, Minash was in the other day. I uh, you know, walked the line with them. Um, and uh, yeah, they are good. They, they need to repair that. And they're good to do it. This is the second time we've asked them to come back and do it. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not a good situation because of mowing and weed whacking out there. This is a power line running along the core of the building. So he was in when, when the, yeah. Last Wednesday? Last Wednesday. And are they planning on scheduling it? Yeah, that's what we're asking. And so the fellow that was out here was, came out to work on town hall, um, the water softener system. And I just, while he was here, I made him aware um, and he absolutely agreed, but needed to go back to his boss and get it saved. So again, it's one of those things where um, I'm going to have to be persistent. Now. Yeah, because sometimes they forget to tell their boss. I, I understand. Let's go to the top. Okay, anything else? Any questions for Thank you. All right, uh, select board review, both road weight limits. So I'm sure that's why the rest of you are here. Um, we don't really have debates here, but I'm gonna allow, you know, you can, can't debate between each other, but more than welcome to um, present comments to the board um, for our decision tonight. I'm Dana Brown. I'm just trying to understand what's actually going on. I'm confused of what's happening. Well, uh, the bridge has been uh, posted for six tons for maybe three or four or five years. Mm -hmm. um, overweight permits say that. Um, the Gulf Road is not part of the overweight permit. That's excluded. If you look at it. 
And we've been receiving complaints that um, trucks have been visiting the bridge. So we're, we're visiting that. I talked to your road foreman today, and D-Trans is rated at 58,000 tons. Well, I've done a lot of research on this, and um, the town um, has the authority to post whatever they want mm -hmm. on the thing. That's what it's posted at. Um, yeah. Whether the bridge, we do have the uh, so the, the bridge. Um, so, so why are we restricting it so much? So, if I can give you, can I jump yeah. into some um, some history on this? Um, and actually, this came to my attention initially um, from uh, Paul McGrath here, um, who uh, resides very close to the bridge and was concerned about the truck traffic around it and uh, referred to the six ton post. Um, and I think at the time, as was naively, we feel up six tons and six tons. Um, so, so the process uh, included trying to uncover some history. Um, why is it six tons? Uh, what was the what was the decision based on? And was that decision uh, based on a select board motion? So, um, and in the research. Um, there are two areas of concern. One is that uh, to everyone we speak with in, at VTrans um, and the Department of Transportation, uh, the services, the bridge uh, engineering services, uh, et cetera, rate the bridge at um, somewhere from 50, 55 times. Um, and and there is no, uh, therefore, there seems to be no clear explanation as to why it was posted at six times at some point in time. It appears that this was done in 2011 and some follow up in 2012. And so, digging back into the um, minutes of the, those times, um, the road foreman at the time uh, did report, and just a simple road report, reported that uh, he wanted to post the bridge at six times. Um, and then, and there was no motion on that. It was just, it was a report. Um, and as a matter of fact, there was no question as to why he wanted to post it six times. Um, in a subsequent select board meeting in uh, 2012, Carl at the time did pose a motion to uh, have the overweight permits include or exclude, rather, 12 for a period for trucks over 25,000. Um, and that was agreed to. By the board. Now, how the board um, agreed to the change in the overweight permit without there being a board decision initially to post the pandemic or six times, I don't know. I, I don't have the answer to that. But that's the history as I see it. So, on one side, we have engineering telling us that. This bridge is okay. It's rated seven out of nine. So it's in good shape. It had been paved at one point. Um, there had been road crush on it at one point. Yet we have this posted. Um, and interestingly, um, the bridge is posted on either side of it. Um, so there's posting from the north. Wolfpit side coming into the bridge, and then there's a posting right at the bridge going in the opposite direction. But there's no posting on Route 15 coming into Gulf Road. So when you come into Gulf Road on Route 15, you get a 24 times in kind of posting. 
you go up the road three quarters of a mile, there's a sign that says six tons. What do you do? Uh, there's no turnaround there. And if it is a law of any person that says six tons, what do they do? Back up? So the conclusion that I come to here is that this posting was done, was arbitrarily done, it was not uh, approved by the board, and it is not substantiated by state engineering. So that raises the question, what do we do now? Um, now the overweight permits do all include or exclude welfare. So that would include or exclude the sell, um, any oil company, any services that go to residents along that road, school bus would be excluded, connect on the road, suite would be excluded, and that would have a pretty dramatic impact on the continuation of the um, transfer station. And so what do you do? Um, my proposal is that we um, take a motion to uh, rescind the motion made back in 2012 about having the Gulf Road excluded on the local roads and find no justification for it. If we don't make that change, then we're going to have to contact all trucking companies, including residential services, and tell them the roads closed. Because we cannot do selective enforcement. And I believe that that is a trap that uh, we don't want to fall into. It's just not, it, it, it's not right. So we have a issue here of selective enforcement, or we have an issue of making a motion to assume the motion of 2012 and withdraw the provision to expert trucks from wealth. Now, in addition to that, I think that the, the concerns are legitimate. Um, trucks on, on Gulf Road, Gulf Road is a windy road. Um, and I think the issue is as much speed as anything else. Um, now, the Sheriff's Department is our enforcement arm. That's what we have to enforce it. Now, the, as impractical as it may seem, uh, the Sheriff cannot randomly pull over trucks because they think they're big, even if it's to the logical layman, of course it's big. Horses over there. there. There needs to be probable cause of some kind. Either for speeding, you can pull them over for that. They got equipment failures, you can pull them over for that. But the sheriff will not pull over a truck because they think it's heavy. Because that'll get thrown out in court when they know. So, what the sheriff can do and what can be accomplished in terms of enforcement is speeding. So we may want to consider um, that the town does have the right to um, consider changing speed limits. 50 miles an hour is the highest, you can't go above that. Um, and the lowest is a little debatable, I think it's 30 or 25. Um, but we could reduce the speed limit on the road, which is an enforceable action. And we could ask trucks to be aware that we you know, call for um, directed patrol to slow down the, the, the trucks on it. The six time limit is unsupportable at court to the same way. I mean, that they lash out at the court. Well, I believe so because there's no way to substantiate that. And there's, no, there's no history that uh, suggests that it was ever something that was officially approved. It sounds sensible to reduce the speed limit, then you can't go below 25. I think that's that's reasonable on that road, especially in the winter time. 
One more season. But it's, uh, anyway. but then we'd have to go what the 24,000 pound limit. Well, the state statute, so my, my, my proposal is that we reset the state statute. How this must happen 12 years ago, I don't know. But state statute says 24,000 pounds. Reset. We're not a charter town and we're under the umbrella of the state and we are required to follow the statutes of the state. And that is 24,000 pounds. Now the town can post something different as they did. Um, but it has to, in my mind, it has to be justified. And shutting down all commerce on that road, including residential services. And selective enforcement is something we want to do. I've got some concerns about 24,000 pounds because some of our major lake makers are 4,000 gallons. And that would be more like 60 or 70,000. Right. So there's two things. One is that if you're a commercial, um, you can get a, an overweight permit. Because uh, there's all more calls like every year to verify that you're no prostate. Oh, did it? Yeah. Um, but it's specific in the statute. Um, this is the chapter 23 of the statutes. It, it kind of covers all of this. Um, fire equipment and, and town maintenance highway equipment is exempt from uh, all weight limits. And specifically fire equipment. We try to stay off like butt season. That would be bad. That's a good idea. Yeah. Now I find that, that uh, in in mud season, most trucking companies are, are really very good at uh, calling. You know, they took calls. This was a bad mud season. They took calls all day long from trucking companies saying, hey, we want to go here, we want to go there, and um, in most cases, we had to say, no, we can't go there. Um, so I found that people were very, the trucking companies were responsive. They were doing the right thing. Any other comments? Anywhere else? We see this everywhere. I was in Boston, I came on the news, and it goes up and it goes down. And the 24,000 pound rule for the state of Vermont really isn't all for the water, it just is something because there isn't anything except a pickup truck that's going to make service there that's under 24,000 pounds. But most of, in my experience, Truckers were very good about it. Speed was very rarely an issue ever. But yet, the town, in their infinite wisdom, and if we started getting tandem dump trucks or sending tandem dump trucks with 14 yards of sand over bridges that are rated eight and nine tons because they have to pile snow. They can't get up to the other side and do it, and nobody does this kind of thing. But I, I'm a trucker myself. I own a truck. I live in Walpole. Okay. But I would, I don't give a second thought to speeding on any of these roads. I mean, if that's the way you're going to try and enforce it, I don't think about the trouble. But it's so much better. As a, as a trucker, to not have to go down to the Reese's farm and make a 130 degree turn to get on the North Suffolk Road to get my truck on there versus coming in the Gulf Road, coming out with a nice tea on the North Road. Right. We all do it. Uh, I don't, when it first happened, I've been here since uh, 1998. It wasn't then, like I said, it was 2011. I never understood the only one in the previous town. The bridge is good. I've known these fellows for years, and these are the people that have traveled roads more than anybody else. They're not looking to break the law. They're trying to work an efficient operation in times where we can barely make ends meet now. That's that's all. I mean, far be it from me, I'm just a little tired. I'm just saying that's that's what I see. 
No, I only run my truck eight months of the year anyway. I don't run it months. I don't start running until middle of April. And I quit before Thanksgiving. Yeah. But other people have to do that. And, and I know that Jim and Dean and all these guys, they're calling everybody. They know everybody. If they have a problem, if they have a question, they're not called. They're not going to go out there trying to get stuck in the mud or run it just because they have to get this one load through today, or what? Right. And that's kind of the way I see it, and that's the way I had it when I was in Morrisville. We never had any trouble. If somebody had a problem, they called me. They don't just run rampant. Oh, maybe a lot of them. But other than that, they're good people. Yep. And I don't, I don't see the least problem I don't think they're planning on running 35 loads of gravel every day past everyone's house on that road just to make dust and dirt and speed. Yeah, well, I think your point about North Coast Road is, is, is very valid. Um, I, I think so just for clarification, I think it's important to everybody understand that the, 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 the dangerous part of that road is going uh, west bend and taking a right hand turn onto North Boulder. Correct. That's where you actually have to go into the oncoming lane, and you're actually going to end up in the oncoming lane on North Boulder. Right. You cannot make that turn without doing that. That's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, if there's somebody coming over that hill, if they sit and you know, know the golf road, North Boulder road doesn't matter. You can, you can pick on the trucks, but it's the vehicle traffic that's to do with the speed. Yeah, you know, the trucks. I mean, you get a cowboy every now and then on a truck, makes bad apple for the rest of us. But as a rule, most trucks are pretty considerate. Yeah. And that turn is just too dangerous for anything that's bigger than a car. And even a car. I mean, I, I take it every day. Right? Yeah. And, I dread it. And, and the big thing about that is if we get in an accident with a commercial vehicle, we're automatically liable, right. even though it wasn't our fault. Yeah, you're in the wrong side of the road. Wrong side of the road. Right. It's not, it's not. So, well, I, oh, excuse me. And in years past, um, from 16, when the investigator first brought this to everybody's attention, that the bridge is good for 65 times. Um, we've tried through the years to get on that road and got the sled board and we were on it. There were oh, times when that, um, what the sled board has always done is <coughs> they turn to the road crew and said, what do you think? And our road crews in the past have said not enough gravel to support truck travel. It's in the news. Um, which was true. Um, but after the Halloween storm, the pollution stepped in. We graveled that road, which was fantastic. It helps your transfer station. Nobody's dragging their cars to the mud anymore. That road finally has gravel on it. We spoke with the road crew now. There's plenty of gravel to support truck travel. The bridge hasn't been an issue since 2016. Right. It's the amount of gravel on the road. That Gulf Road now is one of the best gravel roads that we've got. And as far as being windy, I can take down some rides on some of these other roads that are a lot more. No, I know. I'm just thinking of speed of being windy. And speed, when you turn onto that North Walker Road and come off the bridge, anytime that the asphalt piece of dirt is going to bump, if you get a cowboy that wants to go over that at 25, 30 miles an hour, he's going to balance until he gets to the point of rock. Just I have no problem with speed being 15. I'm all for it. I'm in no hurry. Yeah. Um, I'm worried about safety and I'm worried about selective enforcement. Um, I don't want to lose the ponder. When you shut this road down for whatever reason, there's people on the pond road that don't like trucks either. You're absolutely right. I mean, the pond road is, is they'll be in here. You know, it's actually the, the bigger issue. So, I mean, that's that's I think one way to not. 15 was being reconstructed. That drove trucks out of the pond room. And uh, yeah, traffic was going on significantly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. No, I, I agree with And it's not, it's, 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 it's at any rate, my, my proposal to the board is to put forward a motion to rescind the motion of 2012. And we move to the Gulf Road restriction and we go to the I'll second that motion. Does the board have any further discussion or questions on this? 
What are you going to do for the speed limit? I think that's a separate motion. Um, well, the said discussion. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Discussion. Just, uh, let's comment here. I guess just two comments. One, so I'm on graph on the one that brought this up originally. Uh, the main reason for bringing it up is because I stare at the six on the Bottom line. It's not necessarily the speed. I mean, it, when someone said it last week, cars are worse than trucks on the speed. It has to do with safety. And so if the bridge is rated at X and we're going to allow X, so be it. But at the last meeting, uh, I'm not sure who would say it, but someone had said that the state wouldn't sign off on exactly what they're rating that bridge on. Right. Have they done it now? Can they do that? And whatever that whatever that is, the by You know what I mean? If it's 100 tons, it's 100 tons. If it's, you know, six tons and six tons, whatever that is, who is making that engineering decision on what that bridge, you know, we're gonna rescind something that the select board did in 12 years ago, 11 years ago. And, and if there's engineering and safety to support that, fine. If the state is not signing off and will not sign off and say, hey, this is what that bridge will really carry. Who makes that decision? The design load can be found on B-Transit's website. I, I, I was going to say, they have it. Every, every bridge in Wolken is free. I, I have the report, but it's something where if you call them, they will not, they won't even tell you that that is actually what it is. What they're telling you guys, that, as Mark said earlier in this meeting, that 51,000 pounds, I think so, it says higher than that on this report. So what is the actual and, and whatever it is, it is. Yeah. But it's a million dollar bridge. So outside of the, the safety aspect of it, you know, the speed, I would love to see I live right at the bridge and you have truckers that come by at honestly 15, 20 miles an hour and, and drive nicely. And you have cars that go there and a UTD go by there at six miles an hour. And, and so it's it's not a question of that because the sheriff's department is gonna enforce what they enforce. Mm -hmm. They've done, I've seen them more there once a day over the last couple of weeks. Prior to that, I've seen them once in the last year. They're going to enforce what they're going to enforce. But if the bridge is rated at X, and some engineer, not any of us in here, or who makes that decision, period. And, that, and that's because it's been, the number has changed numerous times. Mm -hmm. Everyone has their own number. The report says another number. The report has no number on it, has yeah. a code. Um, and, and, and so interpreting that code uh, is, is critical. Um, from Captain Kevin, Kevin Andrews, uh, Chief of Safety, Vermont Department of Motor Vehicles. Bridge number five, three axle, 51 tons, four axle, 54 tons, five axle, 76 tons. Which is the standard rate. Right. He also rated it in, in 2012, when 2011, when these signs uh, were, were placed. Uh, the bridge inspection at the time rated the bridge as no posting required. So yes, we go there and do the test, the stress test on it, and sign off on this is what it is. There's one machine in the entire state of Vermont that can perform that express test, and they're not going to take it off road or the That's not going to test it. They're just not. I got just one thing out of that. I think the board ought to be very careful what they're doing here because they're going to set a preference for every road. That's the state statute 24,000 pounds. You just and what I'm well, we're more than that. With, with, with overweight permits, yeah. I do that and shut down Congress. Well, 24,000 is just a norm, just right. like the bridge rating you just said that the state does, you know. And like you said, commercial people, we get our overweight permit every single town in the state does it. You know, we pay our fee, either it's a single or fleet, and it's just the way the system works, right? Yeah, I agree. 
I don't think we're setting a precedent. I don't see it. I'm not sure what you're getting at. Well, I don't know the hour or if you guys put this speed limit down to 15 miles an hour. Oh, I'm yeah. going to say, hey, whoa, 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 we are. I'm on my 15. Well, we're not even going to talk about speed limits tonight. It's not something we're going to talk about. Is it 35 miles an hour? Just, I believe it is. Just, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30. just curious. Yeah, all roads in Milford are. Yeah, for that, right? Yeah, something. It's close to the 35. Yeah. Yes. If you're driving 35 down that road, the traffic shouldn't be on. It's too fast. Oh, I agree. But yeah, it's fast. <laughs> but, uh, I should be on the with 20 in the car. No, I mean, it's, well, it's nothing to meet someone doing 60 in the car. Oh, I know. I'm on the wrong just, side of the road. I see him go past stars way on the wrong side of the road. Yeah. And you're fighting there. House. <laughs> so we okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, you ready to vote? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? You have to vote based on your own. Yes, you do. Because you say you're saying. Staying. It could be. And just one is a motion, please. Can you read it back? The motion is to remove the right. limit. To rescind what the former select board did and put it back to the normal state weight limit. So we're going to remove this, the whole weight out of that. Weight yeah. sign. Right. The six ton, that's all. Yeah, the yeah. six ton size would be removed. You still need an overweight permit. Okay, but the overweight permit will no longer exclude. Should we okay. issue uh, amended permits to say that? I think it would be uh, in good order to do yeah. that, yes. <laughs> so, just one question. How does that affect so on overweight permits? I'm not a trucking company. On overweight roads, do you see track the trailers and tracks the trailers going up and down on the local road? Whether they have permits or not, no idea. Right. But how does that affect in a track the trailer now? Get a so there are trucks, you guys are way better what your trucks weigh, but there are 70,000 pound trucks going over that bridge, give or take, right? 60, 70,000 pounds. Tracks and dumps, four drive. Does that open up for a 80 to 100,000 pound truck? To come across and go down Gulf Road with no overweight money. Can they come to the town and get that? Because now what's going to happen, you have, and, and I don't sit there and look at the road all day long, but consistently you have tractor trailers running up and down North Gulf Road, which is why we just had to pass the whole road. So that being said, can they now apply for an overweight permit so they don't have to go down, which I get. On that down by the side, just that turn. Mm -hmm. And they now come across with an overweight permit and head down Gulf Road. Does that open up that for them? Yeah. So, overweight permits are um, it's a request from the company and it's based on their axles. And the axles uh, determine what our select board will ask for weight. I don't know, I think 99,000 pounds is the most. And it depends, is that six axles? It's a six axle tractor. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. But that's, that's a tractor trailer, a 54 48 foot tractor trailer, for three axles and a truck. The truck isn't there. Is that North Fork Road at 24,000 something? Yes. Yes. But you need a first <laughs> hour in the engine. I've been playing with that for years. Yep. An empty trailer can walk with a lot of animals in that road. Yeah, you know the the, the, the North Oak Road is is actually not that, you know more concerning, and that that is where the heavy trucks are going. There is the energy in that road. Uh, do those trucks have permits? Probably most of them don't, um, and that puts us into a position of how do we enforce that when our enforcement arm. Is unlikely to enforce it unless they're pulling over for some other reason. Um, 
And this is where we come into an issue where I think the board's biggest challenge is to find funding to rebuild the North Lookout Road as a connector road uh, and have it uh, designed and engineered to handle the traffic that is just natural right now. I don't know how to stop that. Well, it's a natural crossroad. You know, you're not going to stop it. You're not going to stop it. It's just like a road, that's a crossroad. That's another one. Yeah. People use it. There's a reason. And Route 15 used to be at the same problem at one point. Oh, you know? yes. And then that's how it got to be Route 15. That's why I mentioned earlier, you know, it seems like the, the problem comes first, the infrastructure comes to you. That's but I wouldn't fund that. That's, 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 that's big, big, big funding. Big funding. All the way around. It, to either, I mean, how do you fund something like in Russian? How do you fund North Walker Road? What if we just made a patch? And the patching came out of our. Plus three growth fund. 54,000, maybe. I'm guessing 54,000. We haven't got a bill yet, but that's what we estimated. But I think the, you know, yeah. the, the bill to actually um, re engineer North Look Up Road to handle this kind of traffic is what is it per mile? Is it a million dollars a mile or more than a million dollars a mile? That, I know, Facebook Road. In 2007, that hadn't been done in 30 years. The best price we got for 4.25 miles in 2007, that was the whole mix, was $675,000. Yeah. So that was just for the section from Marsville or Marstown Corners to Stone One. And then the hot mix was twice that. But ain't the trucking so that you've got it everywhere. But I don't see it on this road. I've been here for a lot of years. And this this isn't one of those. At the minute they take that six ton sign down, you're not going to see 30 trucks in one time to go across it. But because it really isn't, it's mostly for uh, local and people that are working in the area, not for people coming from the valley, like favors that are going to Newport and that and things like that. But I'm not sure a tractor trailer can get a it's a one-way bridge. That's pretty tight. A lot of that. A lot of the traffic you just see. I'm on the road that which you guys all know where I've been. Is service trucks going past where you go? Once that place took off, the service trucks just going where? To Crassbury Outdoor Center. Oh. They just it just took off. Um, there's there's service trucks of probably four to six every month. They can walk through Pepsi and not. Uh, Deliveries. Um, Hutchins and Hutchins opened that plant in Irisburg. You get a lot of truck traffic there. Ninety no, percent of the North Fulton Road. North Fulton Road. North Fulton Road. These guys are not going to run the Gulf Road. They're going to Irisburg. They're going to Crassberry. <clears throat> they're going to Newport, or they're coming back from there. They're not going to Hardwick. If they're going to Hardwick from Morseville, they're not going to turn on North Fulton Road just to run the Gulf. The Gulf Road, you're going to have customers from the travel pit. You're going to have people using our transportation. Um, locals like me, if I buy my material from Kenny Grimes, this fits in Wolf or Salvis, this fits in Wolf I use that road. You're not going to get the influx of trucks that we're worried about. And as far as permits, 90% of those guys that run that road are local guys that go hot chains. I'm sure they have their permits. And the other guys, the service trucks, call Pepsi. If you call Pepsi, they'll tell you whether they get a permit or not. Just call and speak with somebody and tell them you need to spend the fifteen dollars and get a permit or stay off our boat. It's not complicated. Well, the permits too, because when you get the permit, you also get the insurance certificate that right. goes with. Well. That's the only reason why you need a permit to get the certificate of insurance. That's that. really what they're after. That's all. Yeah, they do this permit. That's all it is. And when the Pepsi truck crashed on the road, right. that was insurance. So put it all back together. Okay. All right. So we're going to move on. Is, is that all right? Thank you. This was a skip for me. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for coming.
Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to move on to uh, Valley Wolfit and Town Hall Central request. So um, at their last meeting, the valet requested a uh, uh, the valet uh, indicated that as a result of COVID, uh, they had a, their participation has dropped, their attendance has dropped rather significantly. Um, and so financially they're um, they're hurting right now. Um, so they requested, they're currently paying $350 a month to use the town hall for ballet. Uh, and they put in a request for some help on that to reduce that for a period of time until they can see if they can get back on their feet or I hope, I hope it doesn't happen, you know, close down in the ballet. Um, and so in looking at that request and then looking at the overhead at the uh, town hall, um, we have, I think our average over the past three years of non ballet renters was about uh, uh, 15. Um, and so that makes the, the ballet actually the premier renter uh, and the most revenue is coming back. Um, my personal feeling is that um, this is a situation, especially COVID related situation, in which um, not everybody uh, wants the ballet to stay, but I think an awful lot of people in town do. And um, we hate to see it go. And so, uh, what I want to suggest as a compromise is that uh, we reduce the rent. Um, for the interim period to January of 2023. Um, and during that period, cleaning, other than the ballet cleaning, be done by the ballet staff. We're spending well over $1,000 now uh, cleaning that out of our town unit. Um, and then a cleaning needs to be done because of other uh, renters um, that the town will continue to do that. Um, I think that's, a, to my mind, it's a reasonable compromise. It's a reasonable offset to try to help the ballet remain at the ballet. And my proposal is for $250. A month. $250 a month? <laughs> Making a motion. Oh, you're standing right. I uh, guess so. I'll second that motion. Mm -hmm. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. And this would go until January? So, January. We will re reevaluate it in January. So uh, the days they're using it, they use some days in July. Do I still charge them the sixty dollars just for a day here or there? I think so. we decided that. I'm okay. All right, Devin, I am abstaining because I'm on the board. Okay. Thank you. Transfer station increased cost for tires. Yeah. Volunteer schedule. So, uh, we did some good work on, the, on this PL on the transfer station, and uh, we actually are losing money. Um, but as Belinda pointed out, how we're losing money is in two ways. One is uh, we charge $5 for tires, and uh, the recycling company charges $5 for tires. So, uh, it's, it's just a wash, we're not uh, earning anything in that area. And the other, and probably the most more severe uh, cost is uh, composting. Um, I believe we are required by the state to offer composting, so we have to do that. Um, the high cost is with uh, 
collector firm. They're the ones that pick it up, and, and you know that's their product. They actually resell that. So, um, so I think those are both good suggestions. I think in my mind, the easier one to solve is tires. Should go to six dollars. Right here. Yeah. And I'd like to educate. Um, so we a little more than if it has a rim, because we do have on there that if it has a rim, there's an extra price to it. But I don't know who's picking up on that. Uh, so I would say a little education with that. If it's six dollars for a tire, but it has a rim, I think it's a dollar fifty more or something. Probably have to charge two dollars extra. Because they have to take it off the rim, and even though they might get scrap metal from it. They charge extra. Yes. Well, they've got the labor. They've got yeah. to separate that product yeah. and use a tire changer. You say, yeah, yeah. I say charge two dollars for the room. But if it's left on, I think that's right. I'm wondering if we're managing the compost correctly, though. Whether you know, it's kind of like a free for all up there. Um, I'm really wondering if we need to. Fill, fill them up so much. Um, if they're like half, taking them both half full or something. When I've been there, they, they've both got a little bit of stuff in it, but neither one of them are full. Maybe get them to just fill one at a time and be more conscientious about the smuggles. Or we could go back to just one, but one. Container and when it's full, it's full. That's well, it. Well, you can fill the container and if it becomes full, then you can yeah. bring the extra half. Yeah. Don't they wash them? Yes. Yeah. So he could put one, the one in his office. Yeah. Or the stockade. Yeah. Yeah. And then if he needs it, I mean, but they're, they charge us $20 per container. Yeah. I don't know. I just, I've just noticed that when I've gone. I can tell you 5,400 pounds is what last quarter was. Pounds. We do it in pounds. We haven't converted it to tons, I'm sorry. How much was it? 5,400 pounds. Oh. And so was that for two months. weeks? No, that was for three months. Oh, well, that's not bad. It's less well, than the a other thing is, is you got sawdust in there. And they charge us for sawdust, which makes the extra cost of that. So I don't think the dollar per five gallon bucket is worth it. Well, I pay a pop dollar every week for this. I know. But I mean, I think people just pay it. Um, do we need to get the sawdust from them? I mean, well, what is it? used to get it from me from PNR, but I don't have them. Was it free? No. So yeah. this is cheaper though, it's twelve dollars. It's yeah. three three dollars for a big bag. A That's small what bag to. is a buck. He used to get me uh, come and get three dollars. Why don't so we, we not waste our time figure because yeah. we don't know where we'll all the rest Why don't we just I, I think we need to look a little deeper into the composting yes. bit and if we find that we're wrong, then maybe we need to raise. That's where raise you the lost the most money, twelve hundred sixty-nine dollars. Yes. So, do we have a motion to increase the price for tires from five to six dollars and rims from to seven dollars? It has a rim on. Is that what you're doing? Two extra for the rim. Right. Yeah, seven dollars so for the rim. Oh, uh, eight. Yeah, eight dollars. I'll make that motion. Okay. Do you have a second? I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. So on a nice note, I wanted to add a little good news into the transfer station. Um, Mark Ruya emails me. Uh, he wanted me to pass this on to the select board. Um, good morning, select board. We emptied out the shed at the transfer station last week. We received $624.40 for raising up for cancer. Would you please relay this to the select board and tell them thank you? We appreciate this. Volunteer schedule. 
Yeah, because I tried to pick up the garbage last week and was gone. Sally did. So yeah. Yeah, Sally did last week. Um, so anybody who went to volunteer doing the this office garbage and hauling for this week. For this week. I could Sally. do that, but I would prefer if we did an Excel spreadsheet yeah. and I know like um yeah, I would do that. All right, because I have to work on field days. I won't be able to drive for a month. I'm having my pacemaker for yeah, a month. I don't know why that should sleep. <laughs> I wish it didn't. I don't want that once a while. Once. <laughs> you volunteer once in a while. I know you only have the car. <laughs> okay. So I did take the garbage from the town hall and brought it over and put it in here. Okay. For this week. Um, well, they're not using it, but I started there and then I came over here and it was gone. So, so Kurt Millings is going to move this Saturday. And I'll put together a spreadsheet. And I'm, ne I'm away the following week, but then I'll do it in August. And is it volunteers just for um, picking up the trash? Is there any? Just kind of when you're up there, just kind of hang out with Sylvia and make sure things are running smoothly. Yeah, he doesn't have any help right now. We don't know where. All right. I'm surprised COVID's got back on petty crime. Really? <laughs> well, what store was wrong? Yeah, they figured out really quickly it did. Yeah, well, the old D too. So that was a dead. No. <laughs> right. I'm mean, sorry. You're on <laughs> What's that? The paper. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, in the paper. paper. <laughs> Select so board delinquent down. tax agreement with land owner. I don't know what status means. Are there two of them? No. Um, but so we have a request from. Um, Randy Barella. You guys want this on the screen? And I think everybody has a copy. Yeah, we can report it for public. Sure. Yes. So, Thomas and Brandy Morello's property taxes on 1417 Jones Lane in Mocha. They owe $974.93, and they'd like to make payments of $100 a month for the next four months, and then $150 until paid in full. We have given them um, a, a tax payment in the past. And they have paid it. And they have honored it. Um, I don't know what their situation is. Um, Tommy is sick. Um, so for health reasons, I guess. Are they here? Pardon? Are they here? No. Um, okay. The only thing we're, I'm curious about is that uh, they purchased, recently purchased 70 additional acres. Brand new yet. And the question is, if, you're in a tax fund now. With the additional 70 acres, how's that going to be? The 70 acres were paid in full of taxes were. Brandy has a life estate on this property. It's actually owned by her brother, who's the one that is ill, and she was not aware that he was not making payments until. They got the Millington tax bill, Joanne did, and then they immediately contacted us and came up with a payment. She has a tendency as her sister to take care of her brother. Yeah, okay. I was just curious about the addition of 70 acres. I mean, that is taxable land, that is an inheritance. Or... It is, I think it is. Uh, it was bought from Minaj, so I'm not sure. I think they have a history of paying. They, yes. They, they paid off like three years and did faithful payments. 
I make a motion that we agree to this, this arrangement. They've got good credibility. And it's only eight months. Yeah, we have a second. A second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? So carried. So Belinda, will you write them the letter? Yep. And just so you know, the address for the Thomas Willis uh, changed and everything will go to Brandy, so she'll be made aware of it, of all the taxes and stuff. Nor will get Ross Rock request. So this uh, this crosswalk this request is actually several year, years ago. Uh, there's an elderly resident that has to get across North Road to get to the Netherlands and has requested a crosswalk to make that safe. Does that mean not for the village or are on North Road? John Phillips. It's, it's before the village. John it's just about where the golf road is. The next house. Oh, yeah, across the bottom line. 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 You know where Gary Langdell is? Yeah, cross Gary Langdell? Yeah, cross right there. Cross the road. Why don't you move the mailbox inside the road? I think the they post won't let it. No, the yeah. post office won't. Post office. Because they go lines. they go down one way. No they refused to. Yeah. It's tried for many years. Yeah. 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 Because Langdell has his, so we made them put it together. I think Ray's is there too. Um, so I think the request for a crosswalk, um, unfortunately, I, I you know did some research on this. Uh, it is a it is a town road, um, federal highway. Um, if it was Route 15, we know the rules are there and there. Requires a study and so forth and so on. Uh, I don't know exactly what's required for it. Uh, I don't see how we can put one in on a travel road like that. It would be different if it's in the village, but I just don't, I don't know what the. What well, it might slow people down if they know there's a crosswalk. I think the only way you can do it is put a speed bump. Yeah, it's really unusual. It's, it's unusual to see a crosswalk. Yeah. I mean, that's what they do in Barry. Most of your major cities, Barry, Montpelier. Now we'll put in a foot and a half high speed bump, and boy, you better slow down. No, oh, I'm not. Slow down. Down. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. All right, we're in here. They wouldn't usually put speed bump on 40 mile an hour road, but they don't know if I've ever seen that. that middle, of, middle of Barry and Montpelier, it's 25. Right, but that's what I mean. You have to. To make the speed bump make sense, you have to drop the speed in that area. Uh, so I just had a sign up that said speed bump. Yeah. yeah. Somebody's going to jump there right next to speed bump. Well, that's not <laughs> well, that's We're not really getting. I don't, I don't see how you can do it. But there's more research required. We are yeah. in the next meeting. This is about a four year old request. So we can move on. <laughs> okay. So you're going to work some more. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Last, well, two things. Um, town event. I put together quickly a, a spreadsheet um, based on last year's event. I'm open to any suggestions or new suggestions. Um, I'm not taking ownership of this, but. I'm asking for help on some to fill in the blanks for um, the event of what people can do. Last year, um, Bernard provided all the corn and he had a turkey fryer. I'm not sure if he's around. He might let us use his turkey fryer. Does anyone have one besides me? They're dangerous. All the power is getting to <laughs> But it worked fabulous for, for, for boiling corn mm -hmm. for 200 people. 
So do you want us to start telling you what we can sign up for? Or? Yes. And why, why, yes. And so I, I have a pop tent, so like I did last year. What? A pop tent. Okay. And I'll take care of the uh, hamburger patties. So it's I, we did last year. I really yeah. loved it. I know. Um, That's all right. I'll do a big ask. It was 15 pounds that we got last year. I figured we needed. You might give plus. me a sign to hang up that says sponsored by Hannah but I'm okay. I'll put that on the, on the <laughs> fence. Okay. Maybe you can get back to me, Deb, on ideas um, from your community garden or something. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Well, the library is going to have an open house uh, during the event, and then the town garden would like to have free or uh, planting in the garden. We'll have soil and uh, pods and seeds, so people can start sort of a those still in the garden uh, for the winter. And then uh, we'll see where we're at uh, with tomatoes. And uh, we do have cucumbers as well. So hopefully, uh, as we did last year, we had a little bit of relish, but uh, certainly, you know, I think that will probably be the kind of the last food raw for the garden. So mm -hmm. whatever we have, you know, we will prepare for the event and make sure it's uh, either preserved or otherwise sliced up and ready to go. And the music, what, what were you looking for? Because Kim Gascoigne does have a guitar and she would be willing to. I, was, I asked Michelle. Oh, Michelle. To ask. Twiddle, twiddle, twiddle. <laughs> yes, twiddle, the band on Kiss Hill. The band. Oh, that rhymed you. The uh, band. The one that did the funding. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, well, good. Good man. Uh, it is. We should go on. Yes. Yes. I I did they say yes? yes? Well, I haven't heard from Michelle. I need to follow up with okay. her. I don't know if she was serious, if she thought I was serious or not. I mean, they, it was. Have, they have tour dates and everything. Yeah, okay. so that would be posted online. Yeah, I've looked before. But um, if not, um, we'll take whatever we can get for some okay. kind of music. Um, so I was thinking about the booths today and uh, so the whole idea of this free barbecue for the community is to bring people out to see what you know has been going on with the town and the different committees. Um, I might have missed something here. I think uh, <clears throat> last meeting I said I would have a table or something to teach people about how they can access the meetings from home. Okay. Or in person. I think by the time that rolls around, I think uh, Kirk and I will have updated the system to higher. I'll still put it down there. The school board said yes, and they're going to bring their new principal, maybe their new superintendent for the community to make. Um, An update on broadband. Um, uh, Michael Davidson is no longer representing OPEC for the uh, cut, mm -hmm. um, but Bruce Wheeler is filling in for him. Until he so I have, and I haven't followed through because it keeps getting to the bottom of my list, communicating with Diana Clark. Who is really pushing for high speed? She works at home, whatever. I said, Would you like to be on a committee? Okay. So, my goal, what I have to do is I have to, she said, Well, what does that mean? And I need, I have, I need to contact them, see what is required. I think Bruce might be the best because he goes to all the Does he go to the Northeast? Or yeah, he is now. He's going to look at it. Well, she could be an alternate. I mean, he was an alternate. Um, so she could, I wanted her to get, to learn some more information because um, she asked me lots of questions and I don't you know. She could be more informed. 
If Bruce is there, I have I still have the form at home. We need to appoint. I have the resolution at home. We did not bring. It. Okay. Uh, we need to find out. Okay. So how about the schoolhouse? Um, you guys went in and looked at the stuff and you were going to take the metal away. Um, but there's windows and doors and stuff in there. Um, we have any plans for that? Any ideas of maybe dragging some of that out and see if people want to make a donation form or anything? But I want can you just kind of think of how you can how we can clean that up. I I know resource them. Right, but I know I don't know if we take them to the transfer station. Well, Jim's mother asked me for a window that she thought she saw in there. Oh, there's I thought that, in there. I thought that would be. No, no, I, just bit her. <laughs> <laughs> I thought if we drag them out for the event and leave them against yeah. the house because we actually want people to go up and look at the building that can't go in, they might want to take something for coal frames and things like that. I mean. Uh, put a donation on it, put a donation if yeah. you want it from school now. Right. And then we don't have to pay to get rid of it. Just think about how that might work. All right, so it's coming up in a month. We need to get move in here and the last thing is um we brought it up in correspondence but this local control commission do we need to meet before uh, the next select board meeting to they're have looking, an answer uh, they're looking for a letter from us <clears throat> well i would want uh, to have a an official meeting um, with our decision. I don't think there's any time frame. The, uh, the growers have a permit and they're growing now. Right. And they have a permit to right. do that. Uh, so I don't think we have to rush it. I think the next meeting will be coming. Yeah, they're not going to decide until October anyway. Yeah. Well, they're not selling. This is just for a grower who already has <clears throat> gone through the zoning process. Um, they've gone through the state. And the next step is they just need, in order to issue this license, the CBC, Cannabis Control Board, requires the approval of Wolkett's Local Control Commission. So we just need to make um, a motion at the next meeting. Um, the business um, address is not public information. So we would need to just have it, um, and we will need to submit a letter. It's public information to us. Right, we but still. Because. Yeah, know. I know. You're going to have people try to break it. Anything else? Uh, last comment is um, uh, Berner has agreed to continue uh, to manage the Berman model of the transfer station. That's a good thing. As the title. That's it. Anything else? I don't know if you want me to give me an update. What's happening on the box or not? Sure, real quick one. Sure, a real quick one. Yeah. Uh, they moved in and they got the engineers who were there today and got everything laid out. So, you know, all the easement rights are laid out and there's a fence up around them so that keep everybody out of the site. Uh, they brought a dewatering pump today, but they didn't have no strainer with it, so they couldn't use it. <laughs> Uh, but it's still good. It, we found a part of the old bridge abutment, but it's back in the install. We have a unit price for that in our bid. So it's pretty clear what it is. It's cost is, it was about two yards, so it's probably less than $100.
I don't know how many more we're going to find as we go. And we have Pam Pex Culvert. Yes, Pam Pex Culvert. The Joey's coming tomorrow, so I'll put it out for him and see how he wants to take care of it. It's, it's not a big deal, but it's, it's got to be taken care of. I'm assuming the Pex put that in years ago. The renewables there, it was done and removed from the brush and found the end of that. Something that we will have to try back in. The big work is done. Thank you. And does, does the board want to update every meeting or not? A few guys. Yeah, once a month. It's going to be over in a month. So anyway, once a month. Okay. They might want to know if you run into a problem. No, I don't want to know. Oh, I'm just saying. We might know when you stick a fork in. I didn't hear you. We just want to know when it's done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. I will make that motion. Wow. I'll sign. Great. Thank you, everybody. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye